Welcome to today's presentation on CPIC Central 3.0, an automated solution for capital planning and investment control, brought to you by the Project Management Institute, Washington, D.C. chapter, and Robbins Joya. My name is John Hughes, and I'm the Vice President of Technology Solutions at Robbins Joya. For all the slides, visit the PMI, Washington, D.C. chapter webpage. Okay, welcome to today's presentation on CPIC Central 3.0. CPIC Central is an end-to-end, -end, top-to-bottom solution that supports the submission, selection, control, and evaluation of investments in an organization. The solution is end-to-end -end in that from the very inception of a project or investment idea to its very closeout or entry into operations and maintenance, we can track that investment. Top-to-bottom means that we can, top, at the very top of the organization, executives have visibility, can make decisions, and at the bottom of the organization where people are actually doing the work, uh, and, and turning their engines per se, they have access to the system as well. Microsoft partnered with Robbins Joy to build the solution accelerator that uh, demonstrates the possibilities behind using SharePoint and Project Server to solve business needs, in particular the ones around the CPIC process, that's capital planning and investment control. So what we're going to cover today is a submit, select phases of the portfolio management process, and we'll also generate the OMB 300 and Exhibit 53. So let's get started. Here we're, we're on CPIC Central's homepage. Uh, we're doing this demonstration for the NDA. Uh, it stands for the National Demonstration Agency. We didn't go overboard with the front page dashboard. Each organization's dashboard needs are going to be a little bit different. Here we've gone with a simple silver light grid, which captures some basic information about each of the investments in the system. You'll note that this is uh, SharePoint based. We can leverage uh, Active Directory security to handle a single sign-on. We have some drill-down capability, and we have user-driven content. For instance, in the I want to menu, we have access to certain things. In this instance, we have access to submit a new investment and generate an Exhibit 53. So let's get started with the submit phase by creating a new investment. Upon creating the new investment, the new investment submission form comes up. And note, this is just an example. It collects a little bit of data about the investment. Here we've gone ahead and created the Renewable Energy Upgrade Project and marked it as a major major item and put some other details behind. If we go ahead and save, we can actually enter the name of the project and now you'll see that there's been a task created on the right hand side for approval. This is the first workflow that you see work in the system. Basically it supports the governance of the SharePoint environment. If your organization is like most, you probably have as many SharePoint sites as you do employees, which makes it impossible to find any information, be consistent, and leverage things like enterprise search. So this workflow sends a request to the project manager's <coughs> supervisor, to the project manager's supervisor, and allows him to approve the creation of the workspace. After that's been submitted, the task list is cleared out, and the Renewable Energy Upgrade project has been added at the bottom of the screen. We go ahead and click the drop-down. We want to get into the investment workspace that's been created for it. And here we are. This is a custom work workspace that's been created uh, for each investment in the system. Okay, We've really focused on what I like to say, putting the life back in the life cycle. You'll see in the middle of the page that we've actually got lifecycle steps around submit, select, control, and evaluate that allow users who are maybe unfamiliar with the process to have a little guide in doing their jobs. At the top of the screen, you'll see the process flow. Basically, we, co we capture submit, select, control, evaluate, and you'll see those change color as we progress through the submission phase and selection phase. We've also got some KPIs. Note they're all blank for right now. We also have a project uh, document asset library. Basically, every workspace in this organization is going to look the same. Again, promoting standards and consistency and decreasing training time. All documents stored in the asset library are accessible. And again, people won't have to go searching for various documents to do their job. In this example, we're going to actually continue the submission phase by doing a preliminary risk assessment. So to do that, we click on the Calculate Investment Risks task, and it describes the action that needs to be taken. It also lists the documents that we want to connect to. Now, 
These steps are just example steps. The data in this web part are stored in SharePoint lists. This can be modified, changed, updated by end users just like you. For this one, let's go ahead and open the risk questionnaire document. When we open the risk questionnaire document, we'll note that the name of the document's been pre-populated. And if we scroll down, we've got a preliminary risk assessment here that basically collects the probability of a risk and its impact if it's going to happen. For the sake of the math and, and seeing the KPI get updated, we're just going to enter one and say that it's 95% probable that we'll have a staff shortfall and its impact will be an 8 to the project. We go ahead and save that. that this kicks off the next workflow. Okay? When that document was saved, a workflow watching that document said, hey, the document's been changed and it's updated this KPI for us, 95% of 8. Additionally, it's populated our risk registry automatically, creating uh, a risk in our SharePoint list. This is just a stubbed out risk right now, but it's a reminder for you to go in and add things like mitigation plans, triggers, impact, uh, dollar impact, etc. And also note that after we've done that, the task has been marked complete. To continue into the, the system, we're going to actually provide a little bit more uh, data uh, for the project and the investment. So let's go ahead and complete the next investment submission form by clicking. We get moved to the next phase. Go ahead and open the investment submission form. You'll note that we're back into a form. And I put some data in here previously, so to avoid the uh, time and typing it all in. We've got our sponsor's name, project managers, our budget formulation. Uh, additionally, and more importantly for our selection process, down here at the bottom, we have alignment to our strategic goals. You'll note that there are seven strategic drivers, and this investment has been evaluated by the project manager as to how it will affect those strategic goals. How well does this investment align to meeting the mission of this organization? Again, we have some other information throughout here. This would be customized for whatever types of data you collect. The important thing is that we're aligning our investments with our strategy. Now I know what you're all saying, you're probably saying that this is great, but this is the project manager's assessment of how important this investment is. That's true. And there should be an investment review board put in place to review these things, and we'll talk about that when we get to the next section. So, go ahead and save this. When this document saves, you'll note a couple things change. Our strategic score has been calculated, and our funding has been calculated. Again, the document and submission forms affecting the workspace environment. You'll note also that we have a set all tasks to complete. I didn't want to put that in there, but I thought that it would be helpful to be able to push things through the process if necessary. Of course, we would control access to that through the security model. We're going to take advantage of it, set everything to complete, and move to the next phase. You'll note that the submit phase at the top of the screen has now been completed. Okay, so let's go ahead and check the select box here. We're brought into select phase. You'll note the first thing we're supposed to do is do portfolio analysis. So, as the action indicates, we should go into the portfolio management system and part of the exercise and do the selection. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we are.